All right, welcome everybody back to another episode of FinTech Friday, our first episode of 2023. And super excited to have Brock Cassidy from Easy Knock join us. Brock, thanks for uh, coming on today. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Brian. So before we get started, Brock, let's uh, let's kind of let the audience know who the heck you are and and uh, what you do at Easy Knock, and maybe give a little background on on your uh, your career and what led you to uh, Easy Knock. Yeah, sure thing. So I'm uh, today I'm the vice president of partnerships, and I work on a partnership and B two B strategy for Easy Knock, which is a company that partners all over the real estate and mortgage industry, as well as a little bit in uh, FinTech and personal lending. So been able to work on a lot of different things there. But prior to that, my background was um, kind of a mix of product uh, management, as well as growth and kind of um, partnerships with, with Rocket Homes, which is the real estate company that was, um, was and is the preferred partner of Rocket Mortgage. Um, so we were kind of always trying to fit together the real estate experience, the mortgage experience, and whatever else made sense around those two experiences. Had some cool experiences there where we acquired a couple of smaller uh, fintech companies and, and platforms. Uh, they've done a few since I left a couple of years ago as well. So got kind of a good dose of uh, launching our own products, partnering with other innovative companies in the industry. And, uh, and and acquiring and uh, doing other comp more complex structures with uh, with some cool companies because Rocket had all that scale and uh, and still does today. So it was a great place to learn. Uh, I spent over seven years there, I think, and uh, got to do about every different role as we built up the real estate side and kind of got cross-trained in mortgage and real estate, which helps me a lot today uh, with what I'm working on at Easy Knock. Before we go a little bit deeper into Easy Knock, I want to just kind of... Uh ask a follow-up question to uh, kind of what you shared with your background. So, and, and I think this is relevant in your current role too. When you, when you think about partnerships between companies and platforms, and it doesn't even have to be, you know, in real estate and mortgage, it's just kind of generic, but what, what are the things that are, are kind of most important when, when evaluating kind of a good fit for a partnership? Yeah, it's, there's always different different math to do depending on uh, on on you know who's bigger who's smaller what's competitive what's cooperative um, you know it's almost never going to be perfect but it always has to be something that both companies are better off afterwards right so if there's not mutual benefit um, even if you feel like you won the negotiation you know I've made this mistake before where you negotiate super hard to sort of be on like the winning side of a deal. And then the other, it doesn't work very well for the other company, and uh, and then and then I guess shut down and everyone loses. And so um, I I very much adapted the mindset of you're kind of partnering up to problem solve together to make something better than either of you can do on your own uh, because of what you each have to offer. At Easy Knock specifically, it's pretty easy because we are not a real estate company, we are not a mortgage company. Um, Maybe at some point we'll, we'll we'll dip our toes in parts of that, but really we're fully designed to partner with uh, with the ecosystem as it already is. So no one really needs to fear us as kind of a disruptor or a competitor, and instead can can use us for what we're good at, which is some small piece of what of everything else they're doing. Right. Well, that's a good a good segue into into uh, Easy Knock because I, I got to know Easy Knock here in uh, in 2022 and really. Um, kind of love the, the the space you guys play in, and you're right. You're not in real estate, and you're 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 not you're not a real estate brokerage. You're not a, a mortgage company, but you you pl you partner and play well in both of those spaces. So maybe maybe tell the audience a little bit about Easy Knock and what what it is you all do. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's and that's exactly right, Brian. And that's a lot of what attracted me to, to coming into a role here, where I got to work across the whole industry as kind of a uh, in cooperation rather than in competition. So yeah, so Easy Knock has been around uh, for around seven years now, transacting for for most of that time, and a lot of it um, historically was direct to consumer. You know, growing growing with um, paid search and growing on social media and things like that. Mm -hmm that ultimately um, kind of doesn't have the same scale as partnering in the industry. And yeah. so 
what we were doing originally um, and what's begun to change is kind of uh, finding more ways to scale up. But to go back a little bit further on what EasyNox product actually is, it's an alternative. Um, what we offer today is a sale leaseback alternative to a mortgage product um, where clients can access their home equity um, by selling the home to EasyNox for full appraised market value and stay in the home as a renter for market rent um, with an option to sell the home down the line and get any additional upside that, that the home appreciated during that time that they were they were our tenant, or to buy back the home for a predetermined price, which is basically what we bought it for plus an annual fee. Uh, so it, we, what we really like about it, what I really like about it, is that we're giving consumers three really good options. They can stay in their own home for, for the price of market rent for, for years. Right now, it's our product's designed for up to five years. You can stay in your home as a renter. Um, and then you know you can also choose to move, and and if you think the home is worth more than we bought it for, then then you get the difference when it when it ultimately sells on the open market. Um, and you know in a lot of cases people uh, want to buy the home back, and this is a lot of what we talked about, Brian, in the past, is that these people are kind of using us as uh, a stop in their home ownership journey, where they were a homeowner, they they need to sell their home and, and maybe pay down other debt or get other flexibility because they had a job loss or something like that. Um, and then maybe within another six, 12, 18 months, they're, they're right back ready to repurchase the home from us. And so that's how we can partner with mortgage companies, uh, both as a referral partner up front and as a, you know, really more importantly, and as someone that's incubating business that, um, you know, we can't promise we'll, we'll definitely come back to them, but it still kind of stays in their ecosystem. So that and that's that was what uh, was super interesting to me. My background before coming to Finlocker was you know almost three decades in mortgage production, and um, for a lot of for a long time there were no other options for someone that wasn't ready today. Um, and you guys, you guys have kind of helped solve for like you said that interim time when somebody is just not quite ready to to own a home outright, get the financing for it. So maybe maybe share um, some examples of some of the use cases at the consumer level um, that you guys see with, with uh, lenders being successful using your product. Absolutely. Yeah, so specifically, it, you know, the, the brass tacks of it is you can send easy knock the clients that you're not able to qualify for products like a HELOC, for products like a cash out refi, um, maybe even a renovation loan in some cases, depending on how it works. Um, but basically it's an alternative way to access that home equity for that person that doesn't qualify. And so lots of our partnerships, the, uh, the LOs or the brokers or whoever the salespeople are, don't even present our product until a client's already been declined for all their products, right? So that makes the partnership really easy and really, really non, non-combative. It's, it's just something for those people. Yeah. We have other, uh, you know, we have other situations where our product gets presented different places, uh, you know, so that's not the only way, but that's, that, that's really the easiest place to start. And so, yeah, we don't have a credit score minimum because we're, you know, because we're doing an equity product. We're buying the home. We're not, we're not underwriting it as a, as a lender. So credit score doesn't matter. Um, hardly at all, other than giving us an idea of whether they're going to pay rent on time, maybe, but yeah. it's, it's not something we underwrite against. Um, and and, and with, we also don't have really specific debt to income ratio minimums or uh, or thresholds. So it really is for those people that are turned down for for low credit, high debt, something else. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that have alternative income. Mm -hmm. One of the things we first talked about, Brian, was people that are going through a divorce. Um, one spouse wants to stay in the home with maybe, maybe with kids. Uh, so they, so they want to stay in the school system, everything like that, stay in their community. Um, our products, uh, can really help structure that where they could sell the home to us. They could split the proceeds. One, one of the two, uh, former spouses or, or spouses can, uh, can rent from us and have that option to buy it back. So that's, that's a really kind of clean example, a really like visceral yeah. example of, of, you know, you get to keep your home through something that a mortgage product probably would not allow because the, the alimony or the other, you know, the other asset changes that are happening haven't really matured yet. Um, but then you might very well be able to repurchase the home really quickly. Um, so anything like that, uh, people that have had interruptions in their income, people that have had um, non W two income make up, you know, a majority of their earnings, uh, such that they can't qualify. 
But really, it's it, 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 what we see ourselves being long term is not just a sale leaseback company, but a home equity access company. And so we, we have a few different products today that that all that all function around selling the home to us and, and renting it back. Um, and those have a ton of applications, but we're uh, we're always uh, thinking about and, and working with partners and internally on uh, just home equity access in general and home and home ownership flexibility in general. Um, we, we we really think that it's it's really a travesty that uh, so many homeowners can't access their home equity. Uh, they've worked hard to earn it. Maybe they've been paying down their mortgage for several years, and then they have medical debt. Then they have a divorce. Then they have something else. They need the money the most they can't get it and so that's what we're working on oh and, and so what you're working on is would that be in lieu of a sale leaseback so it'd be like a true equity access where they'd still own the home no not necessarily just just kind of painting the picture of you know we're not we're not we're, we're not always going to pitch ourselves as a one product company you know sell yep, specs and that's it. it it's more just that we want to continue to tackle with our partners with uh with the industry kind of the problem in general and so we've uh We've, we've, you know, played with and, uh, and and begun to work on other other types of products that that make that, that promote flexibility for clients and uh, and and you know this product that we have today for the kind of alternative to a cash out refi works really well. Um, but yeah. we're leaving the door open to uh, to additional ways to do it and talking to lots of industry partners about that. Well, there's there's the uh, is there also the the, the applicability for someone buying a home. So if they're, would, do, you, do you have a product that allows uh, someone to, to buy the home and then lease it from you? Yeah, we haven't, uh, we haven't built anything for first time homeowners yet. Um, there, there are some companies in the space uh, that, that do kind of have that like fractional home purchase program. Yeah. Um, right now, everything we do is, is around, you know, uh, doing 100% of the home and, and around current homeowners. Yeah. Um, but the, but definitely appreciate seeing that, like that, that either fractionalization or rent to own focus, um, like explicitly rent to own, uh, where, yeah. where, you know, a portion of your rent goes to a down payment kind of thing. Like would love to see that. And, uh, you know, back in when I was more on the mortgage and real estate side, we, we, we saw different companies working on that. Um, but at easy enough, we don't have a product like that today. We're focused all around, uh, tapping into the existing equity. Um, cause that's the, the there, there's so much to do there, yeah, but, uh, definitely, no definitely, inter definitely interested in attacking, uh, other gaps in the, in the mortgage industry. Well, I would, I would imagine in, in this particular market with rates, uh, elevated that your, your product is, is, is actually creates more optionality for for uh, for that consumer that you know needs access to their equity for for some reason whether it's medical or other debts, are you seeing are you seeing kind of a, an upswing um, in interest in your product given the rise in rates? Yeah, yeah, we've had a we've had a lot both on the kind of B two B partner side, my my day job as well as just with consumers reaching out directly. We've we've had a, we've seen a ton of interest, so um, we definitely recognize that there's. Uh, a lot of equity out there in, in American homes that can't be accessed right now. Um, for every for every bit that rates go up, that many more people are disqualified from getting products like a HELOC or a cash out refi. Uh, so the the addressable market continues to grow. For now, uh, it's it's incredibly incredibly large how much equity is uh, is yeah. locked up right now, and you know the numbers change the numbers change every day depending on the rates and depending on um, where you think home values are. Um, and, and so a lot of the real estate market's been kind of slowed down where there's kind of such disagreement on sellers think their home's worth so much more than buyers think it's worth. Um, so we do have kind of a use case there where you can sell the home to easy knock right now for just appraised value. No, no dispute. We're, we're going to get a third party appraiser to tell us how much it's worth. We'll buy it for that much. And then you can, you can, you know, try to sell the home for, for as much as you want later. And if you sell it for more than what we bought it for, the, uh, the equity goes to the consumer. The, or the, the HPA and the home price appreciation. Yeah, nice. I mean, that's a, that's a huge benefit. Just they still get to partic the point there is they get to participate in the the property value growth, and more importantly, they get access to their to their equity for the the, the real need that they, exactly. they have right now. Yeah, that's that, that's a really rare function that they can be a renter with with access to home appreciation uh, on their own home. Yeah, we really like that that uh, that use case. So for, uh, let's kind of take this 
down a level and, and kind of talk about it at the at the street level where a loan officer kind of is facing off with consumers. How what does that conversation look like? Now you kind of hit on this. Let's just say the the loan officer's gone down their waterfall of available products and there's just nothing left. What how much or how expert does a loan officer need to be in your product in order to kind of connect the consumer with you? Really it's up to them where they can they can go down to the you know the minutia of it if they want but really we don't require that at all really all, all we want to know is that the client has has some equity in their home that they're looking to access that they want to stay in their home at least for some period of time and that they didn't qualify for whatever product you have um, so you know the amount of equity in the home is what we're primarily going to be looking at because that's how much cash out they're going to be able to get that's how much room there is to get the deal done uh, so really, you know, when I talk to a loan officer today or people, people on my team talk to loan officers today, it's, it's pretty straightforward of, you know, the people that in, instead of saying, no, I do not have a product for you, Brian, you can say, um, you didn't qualify for, for any of the products that we have, but we are partnered up with a company called easy knock that might be able to help you. We understand that, uh, that, that they can help you do something kind of similar to what you were looking to do here with a cash out refi. Um, we usually do like them to mention that we're not a lender, so they're not expecting yeah. a mortgage product. Um, so, you know, we, we, we try to be really clear about that from a legal and regulatory standpoint, where we do ask anyone referring us business not to present it as a mortgage, not to present it as yeah. a loan. We're going to, we're going to obviously correct it and all the contracts will be correct by the time they get over to us, but just to start on the right foot. Um, that's one thing we do, we do generally ask them to say, uh, before referring to us and, and, you know, there's a number of ways they can, they can refer to us. Uh, that's not too far out of their normal course of business, as simple as hot transferring a phone call to our team, um, or, you know, turning it into a three-way call with someone on our sales team, or even, uh, just directing the client to a landing page, uh, or submitting the client, uh, on, on their behalf through a partner landing page, if we have an existing partnership with them. So there's a bunch of easy ways to get a client over to us. And then we're going to have to take a look at it um, for f to to give an estimate, and obviously that yeah. estimate is is going to be just that an estimate because we're still going to be getting an appraisal done and an inspection done, just like you know most any traditional transaction uh, that will then figure out exactly what we're going to buy the home for and you know what it's going to rent for and 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 the condition if there's any obvious repairs that need to be done before it can close that kind of stuff. So, like from start to finish, if in Assuming you've got an engaged, you know, consumer, they have intent. They want, they want the product. From start to finish, how how quick can uh, transactions be be closed? It can move extremely quick from our side. We are going to be at the whim a little bit of local appraisers, sure. which in some places have been super backed up. A little bit less so now than a few months ago. Uh, maybe we'll see it again in 2023 as, as, as we get going, that, uh, that the market gets backed up with, with appraisal demand. Um, so appraisals take a while, title work can take a while, um, but we can, I mean, we, we, we often order kind of, do, do a lot of that work all at once, do the pre-title, yeah. order the appraisal, order the inspection. That all happens at, at Easy Knox expense. So the client never has, never has a gun to their head forcing them to do our transaction. Uh, you know, they can back out all the way to the very end. And obviously the, the loan officers and lenders we're partnered with don't have to bear any of that burden. They they simply either uh, you know get get paid uh, when we when we purchase the home or, or have an opportunity to get the business back or, or that kind of thing. Um, but in terms of actual time, same as any real estate transaction, which is super market driven, um, can be anywhere from you know less than three weeks to to five or six weeks, depending on uh, on title work, appraisal, inspection, <laughs> Got and, it. Uh, and obviously how quickly the the client uh, you know works with our different processes, gets us, uh, you know, their, their, their proof of income, that kind of stuff. Well, we're getting up on the, uh, on the time here. What, what else would you like the audience to know about easy knock? And then maybe, um, I, I'll, I'll, when we, when we poke, when we publish this, we'll, we'll post a link to get folks to you, but what, what else should they know about easy knock? Yeah, I appreciate that. I think one thing that uh, that we're often addressing because we haven't spent too much time in the mortgage market until the last year or two is that our company has been around for a while. We've been partnering with real estate industry um, for, for three, four or five years. We've been doing consumer direct transactions longer than that. 
we have a really experienced team. We have a really experienced uh, C-suite, mid-level leadership. Um, it's it, we have very serious underwriting, you know, for our new products that we've created. It it you know it really, despite being new to a lot of loan officers or new to a lot of lenders, is something that's been been you know pretty well thought out and and you know run as a as a very real business for a number of years. Um, we have you know, we have over a thousand homes in our portfolio today that were that were you know actively collecting rent on every every month and actively uh, you know helping clients uh, navigate their 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 options between continuing to rent, selling, and taking any additional proceeds or repurchasing. Uh, so you know it's it's a it's something that. Uh, I think has a level of maturity that any size lender can think about partnering with. Um, we are uh, in the process of announcing uh, some part, some major partnerships with with top lenders, um, top brokers, um, the the broker community in general, the retail community in general. Um, so I think we have a pretty pretty spread um, kind of go to market strategy in within mortgage and within uh, fintech. So I think I, I would I would encourage people. To, I would encourage people not to be afraid to to look at new products, um, especially when they start when they're declining such a huge portion of their business with rates where they are. Uh, I, I, there's really a lot of value to presenting all options to a client that you can. And if ours isn't for the client, it's absolutely no problem. And if if ours is for the client, then it keeps them in your sphere of influence. Uh, you have another way to. Uh, another thing to offer, another way to make money, another way to keep clients close. And so, yeah, I, I think it's really a win-win that is, is something that doesn't need to be scary. One, one follow-up question that just came to mind, based on the, the uh, you know, the history of the, of the company, if you were to kind of look at a, a segment of, of consumers that you've helped, how, how, or how long do they stay a renter in that, you know, do they usually go to the full five years or is it, is it something, something less than that? It's well, so we have a short term product, which is, is the, the bridge product that, uh, th that we really work, to work with the real estate community on. A lot of those people stay less than six months. Uh, yeah. a lot of those people are, are putting the finishing touches on, on, uh, on their home search for the next home and just need us to step in and rent from us for a couple months. But if you but if you throw those ones out and just look at our long term product, our core product called Sell and Stay, where it's where it is that up to five year lease back period that the client can uh, can stay in the home, uh, it it varies a lot. I mean, being that we've the the company I think has has uh, you know more than doubled in the past uh, in the past eighteen months, uh, probably more than tripled in the last twenty four months or thereabouts. Um, it we don't have a super mature pipeline, um, yeah. but in some of our more mature markets, we have seen that it's a pretty even split um, between all three options, which are kind of renting for the long term, renting for more than 18 or 24 months, uh, selling the home after a couple of years and repurchasing the home after one or two years. It's, it's almost an even one third, one third, one third between those three. That's, I mean, I think that's important to know because that's where, that's where that kind of boomerang effect for the loan officer happens, where that customer com comes back, potentially comes back into their pipeline for a, you know, a core mortgage product. Yeah, so the, the way to think about it, the, ma the math there is that, that, that two of those chunks, so two thirds or more of these people are going to need a mortgage product in the next year or two. And, right. and so that whether that's to buy the next home, whether that's to repurchase this home, uh, does you know either way, it's, it's, it's someone in search of, of future purchase. So yeah, we've definitely made the case that um, it's, it can be used as kind of an incubation tank for future purchase. Well, this has been super helpful. It's it's uh, like I always every time I do one of these shows, I learn a little bit more about uh, our industry and and some of the cool uh, players that are in there. And so, I encourage everyone that's uh, watching and listening to the the podcast that's in the real estate and real estate finance space to to understand Easy Knock. Reach out to Brock um, and and see if there's a uh, uh, a path where uh, the Easy Knock uh, partnership can help benefit uh, your business as an originator. Brock, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I would love to get in touch with, uh, with any of the listeners here. Thanks for the time. You got it. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> we just got to, cool. you'll see a little, uh, let's see here.